It was Ray Lawson, and I, I was born in Mark Lane, I think it was number 38, and uh, yeah, well, I had three brothers, like there was a, my eldest brother was Peter, and I had, my next was Edgar and Wallace, and I was the youngest, and uh, my father died when I was four years old. But anyway, we lived in Mark Lane for quite a while, and then there was quite a thing, quite a lot went on there. And one thing I do remember in Mark Lane was that recreation ground where the sports centre is now. That was our sports field where we used to go and enjoy ourselves. We used to go and play. The, we called it the wreck. And there were swings and seesaws. There was a seesaw there. And we used to play up and down there. And another thing I liked doing when I was little there, what we used to do, we used to swarm up them swings, sit on the top and watch the engines shunting along the, the trains, the old engines in them days, shunting the carriages all the way down the sidings, but they are no longer there where the station is now. That, there were railway sidings there. And they, they came back round by Mart Lane. That's no, right, they, yes. Right, right up to Mart Lane, yeah. the road itself, that was the last and they had good, it? goods carriages on. Yeah. And what we used to, the, the engines used to go forward and then they'd hook onto the carry and then they'd shunt them along the, you know, go to the distance, then they'd let go of them, you know. We used to sit and watch them and that was great then in them days. But also, uh, November, we always used to get a great pile of timber in the middle of that wreck. Oh, aye. And we, had those, we used to make a big, great big bonfires there and then. And what we did, we're, when we were little, we'd have the Guy Fawkes and put him in a truck. And we'd go round from house to house, could we have a penny? Could we have a penny? And we'd make a penny or two for Guy, for then, like, you know, it yeah. was great. And you used to but go anyway, out, you used yeah. to go out Mount Lane with We'd that, go down Mount Lane, yeah. or Oral Lane, Oral perhaps, Lane. you know, and make, and make a bobby too. Yeah. <laughs> and then, um, when the time came, we'd have the bonfire, put the bike, Guy Fawkes on the top, I'll be set for you, and then we'll have a good bonfire. But what we used to do, next door, if you remember, to Greg, was a, um, a farmer's field. There was a field there, yeah. railings, and they always used to grow potatoes, if you remember. Yes, and, they did. Yeah, and what we used to do was fish out the best, biggest, best potatoes we could find. And then we'd just rub them about, and then we'd throw them into the bonfire. Yeah. And we'd have a load of lads, little lads and everything, and we'd be uh, sticks or, or bits of wire or anything we could get hold of. And we'd be poking these uh, potatoes. And when they were lovely and done, look, you could see, we'd just fish them out. Yeah, well, we could get with sticks in them, couldn't we? we well, you that's could it. Get stick into potatoes. Get, that's get right. Out. And we used yeah. to get about on them. When they were curly enough and open up, oh, delicious roasted potatoes. <laughs> Even without any butter, they were lovely. <laughs> yeah. They were great. Yeah. They were smashing spuds. But uh, say like after that, that was our playing field, and the school, like I said, we went to was the Methodist, and uh, when the five, five or six years old, I started there, and uh, I remember teachers. There was Miss Turner, Miss Fitzsimmons, Miss Fitzsimmons, Miss Turner, and, uh, Miss who was the other? There was Miss Turner, uh, Miss Fitzsimmons, that was Miss, a Woods, bit Miss Woods, Miss Woods. That I was. remember, yeah, it was lovely. And what they used to do for us when we were little, this is when we were little, we got into school and round about after an hour, the teacher would say to us, now grab one of those cushions, big cushions, put it on the floor and you can have a sleep. And that's what we used to do for a bit. And then after a while, in the middle of the room, there was a long trough, a big wooden trough, and that was full of sand. And what they tell us to do was to go make some sand pies, yeah. sand castles. That's because we were so little. We weren't learning lessons then, but we were... We were was learning about life. Yeah, that's it, what we had to do. Yeah. What else there was, on the walls, they have rows and rows of raffia. I always remember that. On the teachers, how to plait. The yeah. teacher would say now how to do, and show us how to do the raffia plaiting. Yeah. And when we plaited, we would... They show us how to make table mats, and that was when we were in thin films. Yeah. We'd roll them round and round, and then they'd, they'd fasten them for us at the end. And things like that we used to do. And we used to have them bean bags. We used to play about with them things a bit, like, you know. But that was 
when we were five. But as we got older, we went into the next stage, and that was Miss Fitzsimmons' room. Miss Fitzsimmons was the first one, then Miss Turner was the second one. Ah, she? yeah, that's yeah. Miss Turner was the second. One. Then that was when we went into desks. We had tables and desks. Then that's first time we'd seen desks, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> and we, uh, that's where we started learning then, like A B all that lot, so then A B C, adding up one two is two two yeah. and all that lot, and in there with them books, them red books. That was all right there. And after that, we moved up into the higher class. That was Miss Edwards, because she took standard one. Miss, Miss, Edwards, Miss Edwards took yeah. standard one, and Miss Woods took it after that. Yeah, that's right. That <coughs> was uh, standard one, and then we went into standard two. Yeah. And Mr. Latham, Dickie Latham. Uh, who was that other? Mr. Bailey, did you say? There was a Mr. Bailey, wasn't there? There was, there was, um... And then there was Mr. Hale. Burgess. Burgess. Uh, Billy Mr. Burgess, uh, the ex-rugby player. That's right. And then there was Mr. Hale, he took the sport, yeah. I think. And then he was very was, strict. And yeah. then there was one we didn't like, and that was Miss Studbury. Miss Studbury, oh, she was a right, right sticker, like, you know. <laughs> if she caught anybody talking, she'd come around with Rowley and she'd... Bentley on bottles with regularly, you know, that's what she used to do. But yeah, otherwise... Sometimes they tap up back at head with it as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But Mr. Adler, I remember one time that we went, uh, we were playing football. We did our sport, football, on Bishka's football ground. We played on the big pitch then, on, the, on Bishka's football ground. And it was a Saturday morning, and we had a match, we played against McGull. It was the Gull Seniors, and I was in goal, and there was like all these other, as you remember, Oi Cheetham, really uh, uh, Glenn Jackson, Tony Bradley, Gary Bradley and all them, right. you know, Billy Walsh, Billy, uh, Billy Eddie Roll, Phillips, Roland Howard, Howard right. yeah, and all the full team. Been a good team, mm -hmm. a little twenty then. And the trouble was, the Gull were better than us. <laughs> but I did my best in goal, I tried, I stopped as many as I could. But the result finished up 5-3 from a goal. That was the only drawback, but it was, but it was good, good for me like, you know. But, uh, go on, that's jumping on a bit, but when I was little, you wanted to know, like, who used to live with us? Well, on one side was the Bradleys. Oh, we used to associate, then there was the Bradleys, Mr. Bradley and Mrs. Bradley and all. There was Gary, Tony, Derek, Colin, um, Alice, and I think there was another, and I can't remember her name, another girl, yep. I can't remember. Yep. Yep. Anyway, that was her family, and on the other side, Pam, Pamela. Was, on the other side was Mr. Harrison, and he worked at Enscott's Middle. Mm -hmm. And for some reason, I don't know, he had a nickname, and he called him Soto. I thought, you remember Soto? Oh, I remember him, yeah. yeah. Mr. Yeah. Harrison, yeah. Soto, that was on that side. Now, past him, there was a shop. And that was Mrs. Rosebottoms. And that was an Aberdashery, wasn't it? It was Aberdashery, yeah. She used to sell skirts, I think, didn't she? Oh, cloth. Cloth, cloth. That's, yeah. Anything for stitching and sewing. That's correct, yeah. And, and anything you wanted for making your own that's, clothes and everything. Yeah, that's right. But she used to make clothes as well. She did, yeah, like she yeah. did. Mm -hmm. I know, I remember my mother. Taking stuff round there. For she, she was paying us. She was paying us for the silent movies at this. Ah, at ah that's it. Ah. Yeah, yeah, that's right. And she was also Ernest Rosebottom's mother. That's it, Ernest. Yeah, I mean, that's a while back. That was that. Yeah. But next door to, there was an entry, and then the Moorcroft. Here we Moorcroft. Huey. Huey Moorcroft, <laughs> Huey Moorcroft yeah. and his mother and father lived yeah. there. And further along was. That lady, and she only died recently. She was keen on Burska football. Um, she died not long ago. Helen. Alice. Was her name Alice? Was it Helen or Alice? Helen. 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 That's right. Yeah. She did a lot for Burska football club. I mean, she was always in canteen. Yeah. She was always serving. She was always making their tea and everything, Alice. And when she got too old to go, she'd stand up front door because I used to go a lot. I was a bad team football supporter for Burska. And then she'd be standing the front door, and we'd go back. Now then, she said, how they gone on? I said, oh, they've won, they've won. Oh, that's good. <laughs> but she was a good, lovely old lady, yeah? Yeah. But uh, then after that, we moved. 
Uh, where it was a month later. We went to Trevor Road, we was up to Trevor Road for a bit, a few couple of years, which nothing really happened there, there but, but from there we moved to number 48 Victoria Street. Now I was just telling Adam that number 48 round the corner, if you know Victoria Street, um, it's near Central Garage. It's next door to Central Garage. Well anyway, there, the, under the house they used to have a cellar. There was a cellar under the house like and I don't know what it was originally for, but while the war was on, we used to use it for an air raid shelter. Because when the siren used to go, we'd go down there on the boards that we could put across the top. And my mother used to have iron, railing, iron beds underneath her for us to sit on. No mattresses, because might, they might get down. So we used to sit on these and pass time on either reading or doing playing cards or something like that. And up front of the door she'd have a great big blanket to make sure there was no light coming through because there was dead strict on the light in them days, you know. So we used to go there and that was while the war was on. Anyway, about 1940-ish, I was telling Adam we had a bad snowstorm that year. And my mother wanted to move from there to number 55, Victoria Street, which was just round the corner, up the bottom stop at the uh, Canal Bridge. So we did, we got everything ready, and now there's been snow, it was pretty deep. And we, a lot of us, four of us, were carrying furniture like that, tables, chairs, beds, and you know, tied boards, round there to number 55, and we all got settled in there, but. And that's where we stayed after that for oh, for rest oh for a long time anyway while well, that was there. And I was telling Alan that on one occasion that sticks in my mind was at the bottom of that bridge there the as always the government who put them, but there was ten of these great big concrete pillars all in a line right down, right in front of our house at the bottom of the canal bridge, you see. And they told us at the time that they were for to put across the road if the Germans were to invade England and they'd come through, had to come, happened to come through Berska, they were there to stop any German traffic tanks or anything like that from coming through. That's what they told us, like, you know. But anyway, as it happened at the time, them pillars come in handy because Round right about that time, there was an, a general election coming up. Um, Harold Wilson was the candidate. And what he did, he stood on them and he was giving his speech to everybody. There was loads of people in front of our house. And I was stood at the gate and I was watching him, Harold Wilson. He had his Mac on that, my ear, on his pipe there. And he was talking to everybody, like, you know, about there, about what we're going to do once they got in there, you know, everything like they do, you know. And he was on there for a while, and everybody around there was barely watching and finding it interesting, you know. And that was one of the occasions that stuck in my mind there. And other times, when uh, we were living there, Berska Football used to run coaches up to Lancaster, up to Morecambe, up to Leatherfield. And what they did, they used to get double decker buses, and they always parked in front of our house top of Vic Street and my mother and me would just get a bus like paper on me, get on the bus and go up there to watch football. We'd go and watch birds get there and up to Lancaster and uh, Netherfield, that was another place. And one match, I know Alan knows about it, where we went to Blackpool. Blackpool, uh, uh, Berska played three yeah, that's it. on Blackpool's ground in a cup final. And we went there, we got the coat and we just went to, to Blackpool. And we went on to, to watch Burska and they won. Burska beat Fleetwood that day and it was really good, you know. It was enjoyable. But that's a lot of things. And there was other things like it, according to Burska now, that were um, them flats or whatever they are, used to be Jack Seddon's. Used to be a grocery shop there, Jack Seddon's groceries. And I remember one time when a wagon come down the bridge right down there and it went straight into Jack Seddon's shop 
He smashed off from the wee shop and that, you remember that? Yeah, always, I do remember that. it, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 and that was queer, you know. But the things have changed such a lot with Burger King around there, like where the wharf is now. Well, as that wharf, it used to be an old stables, didn't it? Because they used to sh put the horses in there for the canal boats. Yeah. And, well, they used to stable and they used to feed them, didn't they? They used to yeah, black the at night time. Well. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, and next to that, uh, as you're coming up Smithy Road Lane, there used to be a fish and chip shop. That was Ed Benice with the fish and chips shop. It was lovely fish and chips there, you know. Oh, right. Yeah. And then next to, I'll tell you who was next to it, was Orange Shoe Shop. Because I remember Orange. Yeah. Where, where uh, Smith's is now. Yeah. But Orange had a shoe shop there. We used to go across and get our shoes. That's boots right. and shoes repaired. Yeah. You know, and that, yeah. That was lovely. But talking about Victoria Street, I was just discussing it now with Alan. I remember next to our school used to be a blacksmith. Used to be Smithy, and he, I used to go around and watch him shoeing, uh, doing these horses. I used to like watching him putting these irons in fire, and he'd get his horses toss, and he'd get his leg, horses leg between his knees, and he'd take the old shoe off. Watch, I used to watch him, and then he'd smooth it all off the hoof, and then he'd get this iron right off that thing, and he'd slam it onto the horses' foot, and the smoke that used to come off it, uh, burning off the bottom of the horses' foot there, till he got it, and then he'd get these big nails like that, and he'd ram them, I used to watch him ram them into, into the horses' foot, you know, and I used to think, poor, poor horse, poor horse, <laughs> it's, it must be suffering, but you didn't realise that horses' hooves were about that thick, weren't they, you know, but uh, yeah, oh, that was some of the things. That was good there then. But when I got older and I did leave school, I, I started work. My first job was out some foxes. That was biscuit firm. That was uh, where, uh, I don't know what that firm is now, on corner Red Cat Lane. They've had two or three firms. Oh, the packaging they? company, R&D. Well, yeah, is that what it is now? Because yeah. West Brooks was there after. West uh, Brooks and then this company's taken over. After Elks and Fox. Yeah. Well, Oaks and Foxes, that was it, made biscuits, cream crackers, and ginger biscuits. And marshmallows. Well, aye, all sorts, of like that, you know. We used to sample them. <laughs> <laughs> At bagging time, break time, we call it bagging, break time. We'd walk along and we'd just go like that and get, a, get about, about a half a dozen ginger biscuits. I used to love them. Take them up to the canteen, we had a cup of tea and eat biscuits. It's lovely, that. Yeah. But it was a good job there, yeah. And then from there, I moved on to uh, out of it used to be called out it was Southport Cakes. Victoria Street. Down Victoria Street, yeah. yeah. And out of was right at the bottom. Somebody come to the door, but he <laughs> and the postman, I think it's postman. Yeah, it's okay, don't worry. And uh, yeah, I was there for a while. I used to work on the top floor with a man called Harry Parry. I don't know whether you know him or not. I know the name. But Harry Parry, yeah, well there's him and me. And we were on the top floor together. And we used to, we were responsible for making the mixes together. We used to put all the stuff, uh, the flour and the sugar. That's all the cake mixes. Aye, all yeah. the cake mix. We'd get them all together and then we'd put them into a chute. And below was Mickey Judge. You know, Mickey oh, yeah. Judge. yeah. Mickey Judge and, and several women. Yeah. And they had the containers at the back underneath. And they would put all the liquids and all the stuff to make for making the cakes. And then they all got mixed and from there they got up to the bottom floor where the women had the tins and that where they all the mixes would go into the tins and then from there they put them in thumbs. And that was mainly one of my jobs there, like you know that if anything come in, he always called Mickey Mickey Judge, <coughs> always says, Now come on Raymond, Eric, come on, the stuff here to unload and he'd tell us to come and unload it, we go downstairs and unload, whatever. And also there uh, Mr. Booth, I forget his name, I do you remember Booth? She, uh, I, knew it, I knew Mr. Booth's yeah. son. Eric. Yeah, yeah, well, they were both, uh, they had a department for making ice cream. Yeah. It was a long, a long, like a prefab place. And if, any time they were stuck, they'd always come to us again. So I'd go, oh, would you go and help in the ice cream go. department, you know. So we did do, so that's what they did there. I was there a while. <coughs> Across from... Uh, all right. Okay.